is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I'd like to start off by thanking all 2,247 subscribers in over 80 countries globally. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. Your user data will not be transferred to anyone outside of Aspen Now without your consent. Welcome back to the Reboot series, everyone. Today we're going to continue on with how to implement SLA cancel conditions. Before I get to that, I just wanted to note that for your personal developer instances, the upgrade to New York is now available. Um, as you can see, I haven't upgraded even to Madrid yet, so I got some work to do on that. And hopefully that'll be coming soon so I can create some videos for you all. Okay, so to get to our SLA definition, just as a little review, we're going to type in la space def. That'll bring up SLA definitions under the service level management application. Another way to get there is to type in contract underscore SLA dot list and it'll bring up this list here. So today we're going to look at five different SLAs and the cancel conditions a little bit different on each one and I try to reconstruct them based on things that I've seen in the past um, both mistakes that I've made and I've witnessed <laughs> other people make too and um, you know some of the lessons that have been learned from implementing SLAs. <clears throat> so number one is going to be when cancel is part of the stop condition. So if we take a look at let's take a look at the start condition first here. So in order for this thing to fire we need priority to be one, active is true, and then you'll see here assignment group dot name is not empty. Just wanted to point out this is textbook dot walking here. The reason why we dot walk this name field is to make sure this is not empty operator appears. So if I take this away, let's just reconstruct it from scratch here. I'm first pro my instinct might be to go to assignment group, but then if I take a look at the list of operators, I'm not going to see is not empty, and that's because this is a reference field here, so it's referring to the table. I could try as anything. However, as anything also includes an empty value. So what do I want to do? I want that is not empty, and the way I'm going to get that is the dot walk to the table, and I'm going to find the name field. And now you'll see here is not empty appears. So that's how we construct that using dot walking. Now let's take a look at our cancel condition here. Cancel conditions are not met, or excuse me, are met, and our state is pending supplier. But if we look at our stop condition, we're going to see here that pending supplier is one of the states which will also cause this SLA definition when it's running to go to completed. So let's see which one takes precedence over the other. Does cancel take precedence over the stop condition or vice versa? I come over here to our incident. I'm going to copy it. And I want to make sure our priority is a one. So let me change the urgency to one. And now I'm just going to open it with a new state. We'll see here our assignment group is filled in. Click save. And now what we'll see is all five of the SLA definitions fired, right? And sometimes I'll do that. I'll create five varying definitions, and I'll just test them under different circumstances and make sure that um, they perform to uh, the requirements that have been given to me. And whichever ones don't, I get rid of. But at the end of the day, one requirement, one SLA definition generally. Um, but again, testing those scenarios is very important. So we'll see here, cancel is part of a stop condition. Our stage is in progress. And now what we want to do is we want to change it to pending supplier, right? Let's see what happens. Does this go into canceled? Or does this go to completed? Let's find out. And we'll see here it went to completed. So what does that mean? That means that the stop condition in that moment said, okay, um, I'm going to take precedence over the cancel condition, even though we had a cancel condition of pending supplier in there. 
All right, so I'm going to mark this one inactive so we don't have to deal with it anymore. Also, one thing I want to note is that if your SLAs, never, like if you have problems having uh, them fire, check your cancel condition. Because if we try to open this, let's modify this definition a little bit here. And let's do resolved and closed. And let's copy that incident. But this time I'm going to open it with a pending supplier state. So let's do a copy. And uh, if you're curious about that copy incident function, I do have a video out there um, that shows kind of like how to set it up. And uh, it comes out of the box already, but how to like configure it, customize it. So if I do pending supplier now, and I hit save. Now remember our cancel condition has pending supplier and just give it a second for this to pop up. We'll see here that that number one definition, it didn't fire. And, and what's the reason for that? It's because if it's canceled, um, it's not going to fire and then cancel. So just make sure you understand. So if you have problems with them firing, make sure you check your cancel conditions. Okay, so I'm going to deactivate this one. Once that goes over, we'll go to number two. So here we have cancel conditions are met, but there's no condition. So basically, same construct, right? Everything is the same, except that we have when to cancel. So cancel conditions are met, but there's nothing filtered out here. So we don't have anything going on in the condition builder. So therefore, it might as well. It's basically the equivalent of never. Same thing. It's just never going to cancel. So if you leave that open, if you remember my last video um, on the reboot on retroactive pause, I showed the pause condition when resume conditions are met, but there was no resume condition. So guess what happens? It gets stuck in pause. For the cancel condition, it's just going to keep going until you hit that stop condition, which in this case is going to be resolved or closed. So I just want to note that. So I'm going to turn that one off. I don't think really we need to demonstrate that. So for time's sake, I will move on to this one. Cancel conditions are met. Let's see what's going on here. What conditions do we have here? We have priority is not critical, and then we have state is canceled. Okay, sounds good to me. Then let's take a look at our stop condition. Resolved or closed, fine. All right, so let's go ahead and fire up. Let's copy this incident. Now we'll see here, what do we, we're left with three definitions, right? All right, so we have all that filled in. No state, so let's, uh, I'll just make the state new. Even though it's not in our definition, right? It's active is true, so it just needs to be an active state. Okay, let's go down here. So number three is fired. Now let's see what happens if I change this to a priority two. I'll hit save. Let's see what happens to number three. Number three has been canceled. Also, the other ones have too. So probably there's something in their definitions that says, "Hey, cancel if the priority changes," which is fine. Okay, so now we'll deactivate that one. Close that one out. So now we have star conditions are not met. This one seems simple, and it's the one that's used a lot. However, one thing I wanted to note was that, remember that anything in here, if any one of these three changes, then it'll cancel. So here's one of the issues with this. So if I do a copy... set this in new state we'll save it scroll down to our list make sure it fires wait a second to refresh now oh, it's not priority one that would help okay great 
All right, so now we have number four fired. Now what happens if I take out the assignment group? So it canceled. Well, probably don't want that type of definition and that, you know, with that start condition construct. So we'd have to put in specific conditions, basically saying, okay, priority is not critical and what, you know, whatever else we want to put in there. So in this one, there's two ways to get around this. Basically, you put a UI policy on your assignment group field that says you're mandatory all the time on this one right here. Um, or you're going to have to modify this definition. So that's one of the takeaways for SLAs that make sure you're aware of what's going on in the table and also on the form uh, when you're putting these things together. So as the requirements change for the application you're building or customizing, um, your SLAs might change because the data policies or UI policies might change also. So make sure you're aware of that. So let's take a look at number five. So I didn't like the first four out of the five definitions. So here we have cancel conditions are met and stop. So let's see what's going on here. So this is a more um, advanced type of condition right here on a cancel condition. So what are we saying here? We're saying whenever you put in an or clause, just think it's a different scenario altogether. So what I'm saying here is that if the state is resolved and the closed code is solved by a vendor, well, then I want to cancel it because if our vendor cancels it in this hypothetical scenario, then it really shouldn't count towards our SLA count um, and statistics. So um, we want to go ahead and cancel it. Or if priority changes, then we want to cancel it too. That's one way to start uh, safeguard against that assignment group field being empty. The other way, like I said, would be the UI policy. So at this point, let's take a look at our stop condition. Now, <clears throat> here's one, and this is kind of like the spoiler alert right here, right? So notice for the stop condition, I had to put in a close code is not solved by vendor. Because remember that previous example where the stop condition took over? If I didn't have this close code is not solved by vendor in here, then guess what it would do? Even if the two conditions were met, res resolved and solved by vendor, um, then it would still close it and mark it completed. So let's go ahead and test this out. I'll get to that sys property in just one second. Copy incident. All right, so now let's click save. We're gonna fire our SLA. And do we have a, of course we don't have assignment group filled in, so. Okay, it's in progress, great. So now, someone's gonna go and resolve it, right? I'm gonna go resolved. Let's do closure information, solved by vendor. We'll hit save. And we'll see what the result is. Canceled, great. So you probably don't believe me. You're probably like, you know, you really didn't need that additional stop condition. Well, I'll take out the stop or the close code right now, the stop condition, and let's see how it functions now. And remember, a lot of times you're going to be going through this and some of the things that I put forth here, remember this is my instance and my stack or whatever, however you want to refer to it, your environment. Um, so it might be that your environment is configured a little bit differently. So that's one thing also to get a, you know, a good handle on, on what work has already been done. Because sometimes you'll step in there and be like, well, this doesn't feel or doesn't resemble um, what other instances do. And that's why it's handy to have um, a PDI. So that way you can also do testing in there. All right, so now we're in progress. And so now I'm going to change our closed code to solve by vendor. I'm going to change this to resolved. And let's see what happens with our SLA definition now. Is it, clo is it going to be completed or canceled? And we'll see here. See, it was marked completed. So make sure you take note of that, um, that last scenario there. So 
remember you're when you're working with cancel conditions you're going to have to be aware what's going on in the stop in the start condition what's going on in the stop condition and then what's going on down here so it can be a little bit tricky at first but after you do this oh i don't know a couple hundred times you'll get the hang of it one thing um i wanted to also note was that you know if you're trying to put in a cancel condition to have it stop at some point you really don't really need to do that there's a uh, sla property here which the scheduled job will stop refreshing the task sla stuff and you're probably wondering why i'm bringing this up you know this, this impacts system performance right because some sometimes people just want to keep this thing going um, forever because they want to measure like the average time it takes to whatever you know to complete a task or whatever um, but this is where you would you would come to say okay when this thing hits a thousand percent um, then stop running that schedule job so i just wanted to note that so there you have it those were five separate sla definitions here um, if you want these sla definitions i can send them to you via xml um, you can upload them to to your own pdi if you like my contact information is listed on the about uh, section of the YouTube channel here. So you can see my contact email is right there. My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we've just unlocked the power of ServiceNow.